In this section of the lecture, we study the stability properties of graph neural networks. We will see that GNNs inherit the properties of the filter classes that make up their layers. Our first encounter with the stability of graph convolutions was in the context of dilations. We proved that graph convolutions are Lipschitz continuous to a scaling of edges by a constant factor epsilon if the filter is integral Lipschitz. We further proved that GNNs inherit the same stability property. If the layers of the GNN are integral Lipschitz and almost identical bound holes, the only difference is a factor L that appears as the deformation propagates across L layers. A fact that we did not remark at the time, but that we have to remark now, is that the proof of stability for GNNs has nothing that is specific to dilations. All of the steps of the proof apply to any stability claim that we have on the filters that make up the layers of the GNN. Therefore, any stability property that a class of filters has is inherited to a respective GNN, in which the filters at each layer belong to the given class for which a stability claim has been made. Consequently, for any stability theorem we prove for a class of graph filters, we can deduce a corresponding stability theorem for GNNs that use this class in their layers. We just need to change the filter class in the theorem's statement and replace hypothesis and thesis to match the hypothesis and thesis of the stability theorem for the corresponding filter class. For instance, given that we have proven that Lipschitz graph filters are stable to additive deformations of the shift operator, we can claim that GNNs with Lipschitz layers are stable to additive deformations of the shift operator. The GNN just inherits the stability property of the filters that make its layers. Likewise, Given that we have proven that integral Lipschitz filters are stable to relative deformations of the graph, it follows that GNNs whose layers are made up of integral Lipschitz filters are stable to relative deformations of the graph too. The GNN inherits the stability of the filters in its layers. It would not be unreasonable to cut our discussion here. You could go check the proof of GNN stability to graph dilations, confirm that there's nothing in the proof that is specific to dilations, and write theorems for stability of GNNs to general additive and relative deformations. That said, reminders and precision may sometimes be redundant, but they are never unnecessary. Let us therefore go through the motions together beginning with a recollection of the normalizations of filters and pointwise nonlinearities. Our first assumption is that filters have unit operator norm at all layers, something that is equivalent to having the maximum value of the frequency response normalized to 1. We further assume that the nonlinearity sigma is Lipschitz with its Lipschitz constant normalized to 1. This is just another normalization assumption, but it's worth recalling that standard nonlinearities do verify this assumption. And finally, the fact that both assumptions hold implies that all layer outputs have subunit energy, if the input of the GNN has subunit energy. That's because neither the filters nor the nonlinearities amplify energy given the conditions we have imposed. We can now state the stability of GNNs to additive perturbations if the filters at each layer are Lipschitz. Consider then a graph neural network operator phi parameterized by filter taps H and shift operator S. The GNN is to be instantiated in shifts S and S hat, both with N nodes. Assume that the following hypothesis hold. 1. S hat is an additive perturbation of S, that is, a relabeling of S hat can be written as the sum of S with the error matrix E. 2. 
the error matrix E has norm epsilon and eigenvector misalignment delta relative to S. The norm of E measures how far S and S hat are from being permutations of each other. 3. The GNN has L layers. Each of them has single features and the filters at each layer are Lipschitz with constant C. 4. The filters have unit operator norm and the nonlinearity is normalized Lipschitz. When these conditions hold, the operator distance modulo permutation between the GNN instantiated on the amperturb graph S and the GNN obtained by deploying the filter coefficients H on the perturbed graph S hat is bounded by the Lipschitz constant C times the sum of 1 and delta times the square root of n, where delta is the eigenvector misalignment constant between E and S, times the number of layers L, times the distance epsilon between the graph shift operators, plus terms that are at least of second order. This claim is very similar to the claim we have for Lipschitz filters. The result is essentially the same bound, except for a multiplication with the number of layers L, which comes from the propagation of distortions across L layers. We can say that the GNN inherits the stability to additive deformations of the Lipschitz filters in its layers, in the same way in which a GNN would inherit stability to dilations if its layers were made up of integral Lipschitz filters. And this is not unexpected. The nonlinearity is pointwise. Graph deformations have no effect on its action. We can similarly state a theorem for stability of GNNs to relative perturbations. We have again a GNN operator phi parametrized by filter taps H and shift operator S. The GNN is to be instantiated in shifts S and S hat. Both have N nodes, and we assume that the following hypothesis hold. 1. S hat is a relative perturbation of S, that is, a relabeling of S hat can be written as the sum of S with the symmetric multiplicative error term E times S plus S times E. 2. The error matrix E has norm epsilon and eigenvector misalignment delta. The norm of E in this case measures how far S and S hat are from being permutations of each other, but it does so in relative terms. 3. The GNN has L layers. Each of them has single features, and the filters at each layer are integral Lipschitz with constant C. And 4. The filters have unit operator norm, and the nonlinearity is normalized Lipschitz. When these conditions hold, the operator distance modulo permutation between the GNN instantiated on the amperturb graph S and the GNN obtained by deploying the filter coefficients H on the perturbed graph S hat is bounded by 2 times the Lipschitz constant C multiplying the sum of 1 and delta times the square root of N with delta being the eigenvector misalignment constant between E and S times the number of layers L, times the distance epsilon between the graph shift operators, plus terms that are at least of second order. This is a claim that is, as you should expect by now, very similar to what we had for integral Lipschitz filters. The bound is essentially the same bound, except for a multiplication with the number of layers L which, as in the case of additive perturbations and Lipschitz filters, comes from the propagation of distortions across L layers. We can say that the GNN inherits the stability to relative deformations of the integral Lipschitz filters in its layers. In the same way, it inherits stability to dilations, which are a particular case, and in the same manner, 
in which a GNN would inherit a stability to additive deformations if its layers were made up of Lich's filters. And again, this is not unexpected. The nonlinearity is pointwise. Graph deformations have no effect on its action.